So, yeah, we're back at this. Um, interestingly, when I've tried to do these like videos of announcing like the first team, it's like I it was. I remember the first year, it's like you basically spent all I spent all the money, you know, got like decent players, and people told me it's like you kind of need to bring in players that again are like you know the price is going to increase, so you can you know sell buy low, sell high, you know that metric. Last year, I decided to do that and have like a bit of a cheaper team. And then I was like, no, you've got to have star players. So it's basically the contradiction. So God knows what the meta is for 2024. But um, I've built a team and I'm ready to get roasted for it. Actually, just before that, uh, yes, we are doing another fantasy league. Uh, here's the code if you want to join. Um, yeah, to see if you're better than a bloke who does videos on rugby league for the last couple of years. And the answer's probably. So, starting off with our fantasy team, we're going to go in at our hooker role. Now, there's a lot of hookers that we could have selected. I've gone with Reese Robson. You know, averaged 48 points last year. I, I do know that I was like, Jermaine Hopgood was pretty much like the meta play for everybody for a considerate while when he was playing because he was just like point merchant. But I just think, yeah, 660 six, six, was one of the higher up. About 10% of people have selected him. I feel like, you know, I think Robson actually has a good year, you know, does get involved with Origin and stuff. So now we're going to move into our middle. And I've got Tom Gilbert from the Dolphins. I've got Terrell May and Satili Tupanua from the Roosters. Now, it all really depends on, like, how much of them are actually going to, like, break in and start in the first team. So this is pretty much one that's going to be like open to interpretation. I think Tom Gilbert should be an absolute solid pick, but I think he's probably going to be like a bit of a workhorse for me. So it'd be nice to see how uh, how that goes. But yeah, that's my middle. Edges is a bit interesting because uh, there's been actually recent changes now. For the first one I have is Raymond Fatala Mariner who obviously is pictured with a Bulldogs jersey, but is now at the Dragons. Now, I do think that he probably should be able to start, and I think he'll probably get a more consistent role. It'd be good to see if he could sort of break into the starting team for the Dragons, but it's a, uh, you never know. And the other one I've gone with for my edge is Brendan Piacora from the Broncos. You can kind of see probably, like, the edge is probably the place where it needs some like tweaking um i do think i have like a solid somewhat like uh interchange which is probably going to have someone who's going to come in there but uh it's just getting a gauge of what what people think going into the halves pairing we've got nathan cleary because i feel like you legally have to have him in the team it's kind of like when you're doing premier league fantasy you have to have erling Haaland. like that, that's just the law and we've also got kieran foran from the gold coast titans now, this is something that can quickly, like, chop and change and stuff like that. So, it's probably about 400k. Could be a couple of good performances. Could get his price up and he could, you know, be gotten rid of, maybe. I'm not too sure. I'm optimistic about the Titans. Even though, apparently, no one else is. Judging by the comment section on my predictions video. Now, to the centers. And I've gone with some pretty big ones. I've gone with uh, Bremen Best from the Newcastle Knights. And I've also gone with Hamiso Tabuifado from the Dolphins. Now, both absolute stalwarts. I do think Bradman Best had a fantastic year last year. And I do think he's actually going to get more involved now. Because they're going to probably focus on that left side for the Knights. Alongside with Greg Margie now that Dominic Young is gone. So, it's going to be a big thing. I do feel like, though, this is probably going to be the big thing that Common's going to say. Is, like, you've put too much money into for wingers and set fullbacks and then the centers when you're meant to most of the points come from the forwards so that's probably something i need to tweak now we go to our wingers and fullbacks and i've gone with daniel tupo from the sydney roosters brabham best partner on the wing with uh, greg marju and alex johnston from south sydney might be a bit of an otis for alex johnston probably to pass to him maybe to hopefully break the try record tupo i think should probably go consistently margie the only thing i think he got 53 points average last year i think the only problem is some people put in the concert that would probably be his price is 734k i think that would make him with one of the highest ones i think but anyways that's the starting lineup and now we move on to the bench so as the substitute hooker i've actually gone with tom starling from the canberra raiders um, 
it's, it's going to be interesting for Canberra this year, but I do think Tom Starling is going to be one of the main workhorses for him. So it's like, that's why I think I've, I've selected him. Uh, second one is a in, is a mid to edge replacement. I've actually gone with Ben Murdoch Massilia. I think he could fit the team solely. He's at 353k, so he's not too expensive. So he might he might do stuff. And you never know. This is going to be one which I feel people might actually tell me to move into the starting team. Is my edge and half replacement, Josh Schuster. Been interesting to see what actually does happen to him this year. But 17% um, of people own him, so he's, he's probably one of the higher people. So, be interesting to see what does happen there. And the final interchange place, which is another mid, I have actually gone with Spencer Leniu from the Roosters. Just be very interested to see how he goes and have his price up. Now, coming into the emergency is basically some like some cheap players that could be ones where you know they start and then their price goes up and i actually was like looking into who would people selected so it's like it's kind of cheating so i've gone first off in my emergency you got ko weeks from canberra as one 42 percent people own him then we go with Jaden beryl uh, from the cronulla sharks because i wanted to get like a third hooker and he was the cheapest one i don't know how he's gonna go if he even starts, if he does, that'd be pretty pretty good to see. We've got Xavier Willison as well as my third one as a mid-edge for the Brisbane Broncos. And finally, I have gone with Blake Taff at the Bulldogs as my final injury, as, as my final emergency player. So without further ado, that is the full team as it currently is. Um, help me. Uh, in an essence, I don't want to. I want to do it like actually somewhat consistently this year, maybe like a once around video. So yeah, um, I don't want to make it like as a your NRL fantasy. You know, like how Mini Minter did it back in the day with like the your ultimate team. But yeah, that's my uh, fantasy team. What do you guys think? I'm, I'm actually scared of the comments of this, but uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, Join at the link or just enter this code here to join my fantasy league. Um, yeah, it's going to be a very exciting year. And I actually hopefully will do consistent videos for NRL Fantasy this year. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you all later.